Uh, Richard? Yes, sir. Would you care to do an opening prayer for us? Oh, okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this beautiful day that you've given us and that you have watched over us and taken care of us and we're thankful and we pray that what we do today would be pleasing to you, Heavenly Father, that that uh, we have problems in the world today with this virus and and we're not to meet out according to the law and to keep people safe and we pray that you'll watch over us and protect us and pray for the people that are are not well and that you would help them to get better and help us to overcome this dreaded disease and pray for brother last today as he brings us the message and watch over him and help him to present the word and that we can understand it and use it in our lives that we are to be christians seven days a week 24 hours a day and there's no there's no on and off switch that we live our lives according to your word and we're thankful for your word and your son Jesus that he gave up his life for us sinners that we we may have hope of eternal life one day with you heavenly father and we are thankful for the greatest gift of all and forgive us of any sins and help us to worship you Heavenly Father and Spirit and Truth, as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brother Lies, hold on before you go live now. Uh, okay. Oh, I lost Dylene. Yeah, I'm back. <laughs> Sinuses are killing me. I got Dylene. If I get Dylene, it's only allowed me to show four people. You got everybody. You can you can change your screen setting up at the top. I've got them all now. Okay, we're going live now on on uh, Facebook. Everybody got their mics muted, I guess. Okay. You know, Richard's prayer was a beautiful prayer, and it usually is. It always is. <laughs> but uh, I can't imagine living in this world today with the virus that's out there without being a Christian. Most people have no hope. As we look at the world today and the numbers, there's approximately 161,000 people that have lost their lives in the last two months to this virus. Over 40,000 in the United States. And there's a good chance that most of those have no hope. I couldn't imagine facing this and, and knowing that I had no hope if that if I got the disease and died. We want to look this morning for just a few moments at, at why we have the hope that we do. There's a lot of beautiful songs out there today and very inspiring songs. Some of them not even written by Christians. And and they show the, the love of God and the mercy and the grace that he has for us. These are songs that are uh, praising God and, and asking us to him to watch over us and talking about the the great love that he has for us. One I would like to look at today comes from a, a person who is not a member of the body of Christ, as far as I know. It was written by a family, a family called the Gaither family. And uh, the song, the name of the song is Because He Lives. And that's going to be our theme for today. But I want us to look at the, at, at the, the course of this song. We're not going to look at the whole song. We're just interested in the course. 
It says, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future, and life is worth living just because he lives. Again, many of the songs we sing bring forth a lot of faith and hope and, and dependence of, of the child of God on, on God the Father and serving Jesus Christ. The point is, all men are born, except Adam and Eve. All men live a life, and, and they go through this life until the time comes that they pass from this world, and, and all men die. Well, Jesus was born, and he lived this life upon the earth, and he died. But he's the only one that ever died that lives today. And that's the same thing that we want to look at today. What, what advantage do we have being Christians because he lives? First of all, because he lives, we can lay our heads down tonight. When it comes time to go to bed tonight, we can all lay our heads down on our pillows and, and have restful sleep. Knowing, knowing that Christ died for us and that we have the hope of eternal life. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Jesus lives in each and every one of us. And because he lives in each and every one of us, and we know he lives eternally, then we can look forward to the future. We can, we can rest. We can go to sleep at night and not worry about if we get up in the morning or not, if, we, if we're going to be with God. We have that hope. We have that assurance. We also have the hope and assurance that God lives within us. It says, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, and that was the spirit of God, he that raised up Christ from, from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Because of the indwelling of the Father, because of the indwelling of the Son, we, have, we can continue on day after day after, no matter what happens in this world. And we put our trust and confidence in God. Now, that does not mean we test God. That does not mean we put ourselves in a position of, of, of ourselves getting her injured or, or even killed, that we should do that. We put our trust and faith in God, but then we have to do that which is to protect ourselves. He gives us a mind to, to work out those things. Because he lives, we can, go, we can go without fear to the throne of God. Can you imagine? A person who is not a Christian trying to pray to God, to God his creator, when they haven't even surrendered their life to God, can you imagine what a, a fear could be there of what God might say? The, the privilege that we have of, of praying to God and knowing that he cares and knowing that his ears are open to us, that's, that's beyond the ability of a normal man to fully understand. In the book of 1 John, chapter 5, verse 14, it says that this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us with whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we desire of him. Notice one important statement that that, that, that verse makes. It says, if we ask anything according to his will, you know, our prayers go up to heaven because we're a member of the body of Christ. But our prayers go up to heaven, and God listens to us when our, when our prayers are in accordance to the word of God. We can't ask for things that the word of God has not promised us. We can't go beyond and ask for things for the frivolous things for our life to do what we want to do with. We're to ask God for those things which are, are, are promised to us in the word of God. And, and ask for the, the help for other people and, and on. But, but we can't just waste those prayers asking for things that aren't important at all. Think about it. Because we live, because he lives, we're never alone. Although we each and every one might be at home with ourselves here, maybe with our spouse and our family somewhat. And there's times when we're out somewhere where no one else is around. But God has promised us 
He's promised us that he would never leave us. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are always with us. And he tells us that in the book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Look what he says. He says, I will never, that's never, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. If a member of the body of Christ is ever separated from God, it's because he separates himself from God. Because God will never turn his back. He'll never leave us without the promises that he's given us. And one of those is that he'll be with us. You know, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us because he lives. Because he lives today, he intercedes for us, the, the Holy Spirit does, and, and helps us. There's many times when I would say each of us, I know I have, that, that I've went to God in prayer and not really knew what I wanted to say or didn't really know how to say what I needed to say. Well, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. The Holy Spirit uh, guides us in the things that we do. Look at Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 26. The Bible says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps, helpeth our infirmity. For we know not what we should pray for as we all. But the Spirit makes intercession uh, for us with groaning, which cannot be uttered. And he that, that searches the heart to know what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. We have a continual communication with God. We don't have to get down on our hands and knees and pray as long as we're, uh, we can pray anywhere. We can pray in any position as long as we have the right thoughts in our minds and, and according to his word. Our prayers go up to God and, and the Holy Spirit helps with, with the understanding. Jesus Christ walked a mile in our shoes and he knows he knows what it's like to be a human, and, and he, he, he intercedes for us also with the Father. Think about it. Because he lives, we're blessed with a loving family. As you look at the screen today, you can see several members of that family, brothers and sisters and, and the whole body of Christ. And, and we have, knowing that the, the universal church of Christ is worldwide, we, we understand and we know that we have brothers and sisters that we've never seen that we've never met. But someday, someday there'll be a reunion on high in which every one of us will be together with all other Christians that was ever born upon the face of this earth. Because he lives, we're blessed with that type of family. You know, love to me, with my understanding of God and the Bible, love is a natural commandment. God commands us to love each other. He commands us to love God. He commands us to love each uh, our neighbors. But, you know, it's natural to love them, those people that we get close to, that we spend time with. Now, I'm not sure it's so natural for us to love our enemies, but as members of the body of Christ and the commandments of God, that's part of who we are. In John chapter 13, verse 34 and 35, Jesus said, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Can you imagine, just imagine, living in this world with all the hatred that we see from day to day? If you watch your TV at all, you see continual hatred. We, we watched a, a few shows on, on TV where, where people were constantly after each other, and I told my wife, it's, it's time to fight. watch something else. We turned it over, and, and watched the story about a man and woman and, and, and the love and romance they had for each other. Love is a natural part of being a member of the body of Christ. Because he lives, we can love each other to the fullest extent. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. I couldn't imagine I couldn't imagine going out into this world today and even going to the store if I didn't know that, Christ, that I was a member of the body of Christ. I can't imagine the people that are going through this world today not knowing what tomorrow holds for them. I can't imagine having a loved one die and not know that they're a member of the body of Christ. I, I just see emptiness in people like that. I, I, I just don't see that they, they can 
have any self-contained self-satisfaction or or satisfaction in the fact that they're are part of what God has for us. You know, there's just one conclusion that you can come to about tomorrow. If we were without God in the church, tomorrow would be empty. It'd be nothing to look forward to. Is with your present understanding, you you know that's the thing about becoming a Christian. When we gain the knowledge that we have, uh, uh, Dorless put a thing on the on Facebook the other day, and it's about having the more knowledge we have, the more sorrow we get, and to a point it's like that, because the more understanding and knowledge and wisdom we have toward God's word, the more we can see what's going to happen with most of the people of the world, and and when they pass from this world, that they have no hope of any future. Faith and obedience to God will overcome the emptiness of this world. And there's reason and comfort to face the uncertainty of, of, of our future. We have a promise. We have a future. God has promised us a home in heaven. We have a we have a, a we have what's called a lively hope. That's a hope that's alive. It's not wishful thinking. It's knowing what we have. That's the hope that we have. And because he lives, we have that hope. First Peter chapter one and verse three said, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. By the fact that Jesus Christ is alive today, we have a hope of that, of that rising and being with him. You know, he was, the Bible refers to him as the first fruits, the first benefits of the gospel. We're the best. We benefit from the gospel, and we'll be the fruits of the gospel, as we also help that help to, to plant that seed. But but look at the promise that God gave us. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's a promise. That's the hope we have. That no matter what happens in this world, our physical bodies will die, but our spiritual, our soul will go to be with God in heaven. I can face tomorrow simply because He lives, and I know that being a part of His family, part of Him, and, and Him living in me, that that I have that hope. I can face tomorrow because I have assurance, because I have confidence that there's a place prepared. A place prepared for a prepared people. When this life is over, because God sent his son to die on the cross for us and promised us a place. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For it says, For who whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning. That we should patient through that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. You know, the Bible doesn't promise that everything will go our way. It doesn't promise we'll never be uh, treated harshly. It never promises we'll never be sick. It never promises us a, 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 a life of, of, of no pain and misery. But it does promise us that if we continue through patience and comfort, that we have a hope, and that hope is eternal life that is guaranteed to us by Christ. You know, the Bible talks about the things that we need to think of and the things that we need to do. And it's the only place I can think of, and I can't think of where the scriptures is, but it says, if we do these things, we shall never fall. We have that promise from God. Look, look at how Jesus put it in John chapter 14, verse one through three. He says, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come and again and, and receive you unto myself. That where, you, where I am, there you may be also. Think of that promise that Jesus Christ made here, that if we'll believe in him. Now, the word believe here does not mean just thinking it and, and thinking that, there, yeah, Jesus, I, I believe there is a Jesus. Believing in him means do, keeping the commandments of God. It's, it, it, it's a, a, a synecdoche. So because, because we believe in him, simply because 
He's alive today. We can face tomorrow knowing, knowing that if we pass from this world, that we'll have eternal life with him. Because he lives, the song goes on, because he lives, all fear is gone. You know, there's a saying out there, the only thing that we have to fear is fear itself. There's two different kinds of fear in the Bible. One is that we're to fear God and keep his commandments, and that's talking about total respect for God. It's not talking about a, a fear of injury or fear of death. But then there's the fear of man. God says to fear God, not fear man, because man cannot destroy body and soul in hell. When we're serving a living God, we have no reason to fear. If we're keeping the commandments of God does and, and we continue to do things he tells us to do, if we fear, then faith begins to wander. If we fear, then we begin to have doubt and weakness in our mind. Because that's what fear is all about. But as Christians, we have no hope to fear because he lives. And because he lives, we can live with our great living God and protector. Look at Romans chapter 8, verse 38 and 39. It says, for I, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Because he lives, we don't have to worry about anything else separating us from God. Like I said earlier, God will never leave us, and the only way we'll ever be separated is if we decide to separate from God. It's not, it's, it's not him going to separate from us. And, and it, it's a power. It gives us a power that, that is beyond any power that man can reason with. Again, Romans chapter 8, verse 28. We have to continue as we are. It'll all work out. There'll come a time when this virus that's going around today will, will go away. And life will begin to get back to normal, ever what normal is. But life will proceed back in that direction, and, and we'll be able to hold worship service at our building again, and we'll be able to, to be together and enjoy our relationship with each other and with God. Romans chapter 8 and 28 says, and we know all things, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to our purpose. Everybody that's ever been a part of your life is a part, has made you who you are. And it's all worked together. It's all worked together to help us to grow and to be stronger in God. We have such a wonderful assurance from Jesus, such a wonderful assurance that loves us and and with love that, that passes all understanding. It's a love that, that's difficult to understand that, that, that Christians can continue to do what we do. We know by faith in the promises of God. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 through 19 tells us that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend what, with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes all understanding, that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. Think of what it would be like. Think of how horrible it would be to go through life not knowing who God is, not knowing what, what we have to do to, to receive that hope, that guarantee of eternal life. I can't imagine going through life and trying to figure out what I was going to do next. Because he lives, I know he holds the future in his hand. We know that by study of the scriptures. A, Christian a Christian's future is, is made certain because he loves God, and, and there's no doubt that God lives and holds everything that he created in his hand. He, without fail, brings to pass the promises he has spoken in his holy word. In other words, there's a guarantee there. And as long as we stand, as long as we stand in service to Jesus Christ, 
we'll have mercy. We'll have grace. And we'll have a place in eternal heaven waiting for us. Let's look at, at, at the fact that Jesus is able to do everything that he has promised. He's able to do that because he is, he is a part of that, that, uh, that trinity, that, that, uh, that uh, God, Father, and the Father, the Son, and, and, and the Holy Spirit. In Hebrews 7 and 24, it says, But this man, this man being Jesus Christ, because he continues ever or forever as an unchangeable priesthood, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing that he liveth to make intercession for them. Because he lives, we know that he makes intercession with God for us, that, that he continues to help us. Look what he said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 1. For we know that our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved. We have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in heaven we have that promise and we have that hope and we hold on to that if jesus christ had never been resurrected if jesus christ had not ascended back to the father then we would have no hope whatsoever because if there's no hope no no resurrection of jesus christ we would have no hope of a resurrection for ourselves because he lives life is worth living Life's worth living just because Jesus lived. He made worth life, life worth living, it, and, and, and it must be a, a goal that we strive for. The goal of a faithful child of God is to, is to serve and please the Father, to do the things that, that he says for us to do, and, and, and to grow in knowledge and, and practice his word and will every single day of our life. When this life comes to a close, what a successful and precious goal we could have reached. Think of it to hear these words, these words of God that, that are so precious and every one of us are looking forward to it. There's going to be many on that last day, and I, I fear that, that many from this plague will, will also be the same way that he'll say, depart from me. I know you not, you workers of iniquity. That would be the most painful words that I would think anybody could ever hear. Matthew 25 and 21, the words we look for, to hear God say, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter into the joy of thy Lord. To think of, of heaven, these words coming from God when we get there. Think of a scripture, and I know that probably many of you consider this to be your favorite scripture. It's one of, the, one of the ones I rest on with everything. And, and because he lives, because he lives, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, that's, I believe, what the Christian's life is all about. Doing those things which God has commanded us to do, knowing, knowing that when the time comes, that he will be our strength when we need him. That's why Christians live the life, and it continues to be because he lives. If Christ had not been resurrected, we would have no hope of eternal life. There would be no point in what we're doing today or any other time in our lives. If Christ had not risen, if Christ was not alive today, then we might as well not even be here. There would be no point to life. Like, it said, like I said earlier, it would be an emptiness without Christ. If you really think about it, without Christ, there's no hope. There's no hope of a future at all. It says, if, is, if, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now Christ, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. The Bible tells us that if Christ had not risen, then, there, there, then we wouldn't have any hope at all. And, and th that's the thing that's so strong in a Christian life. Because we know he lives. And because we know that, we have a permanent home in heaven when we pass from this life.
1 Corinthians 15 and 23 says, By every man in his own order. Christ the first fruits. Afterwards, they that are Christ at his coming. Think about what that says. That tells us that Christ was the first fruits raised by God. But look what it says about us. Afterwards, they that are Christ at his coming. That Christ is C-H-R-I-S-T-S. That's possessive. That means those who belong to Christ will follow Jesus Christ as the first fruit. Because we live, we have hope. That's a song we sing. Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ, than Jesus' blood and righteousness. If there's anyone listening to this lesson this morning and they're not a member of the body of Christ, because we don't know everyone that's listening, but we're looking at each other, but others may be listening. If you're not a member of the body of Christ, you have to understand that God, that you have no hope. That if, the, that if this death plague or any other situation comes along and in which we pass from this world. If we're not a member of the body of Christ, we have no hope to live eternally with God. God's not going to change what he's done to satisfy us. And he's not going to change the rules and regulations to get into heaven to satisfy man. Mankind has to change himself to be like Christ, to be Christ-like. You have to hear what you've done today. You have to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You must also repent of your sins, turn away from them, put them behind you. Confess Jesus Christ before men and be baptized for the remission of your sins and continue to live that life of a Christian. If you are out there, we have a phone number on our site, Church of Christ, Catholicsburg, West Virginia. And it's a phone number. If you'll call, we'll try our best to put you in touch with someone near you in order to get you put into the body of Christ or added to the body of Christ. Also, if you're not, if you're a member of the body of Christ and you slipped away, today is the day to get yourself back right with God. All you have to do is repent, ask God for forgiveness, and He'll welcome you back. You can do that on your own, or you can call and talk to one of us, and we can try our best to make sure. I was just informed that I was in Catlinsburg, West Virginia. That's why you all are laughing and smiling. Catlisburg, Kentucky. <coughs> I guess I think everything's in West Virginia. But if, if you have a need, that you need to get in touch with someone. Any of, All of us have phone numbers or the phone numbers are listed on our side and we'll try our best to help you in every way that we can. This concludes this message and uh, we invite you to come to our Wednesday night Bible study at this same site and then also to our worship service next Sunday. May God bless you and keep you. Thank you.